I, I could see young people flocking the streets. I was at the Ethnographic Museum at 1.30 at night and they had just closed and people were banging on the door and they said, you promised until 3 in the morning, you promised we want to enter. It was a revolution. It was a revolution of thinking. This scene happened back in 2004, during the first night of museums and galleries in Plovdiv. But let us tell you this story from the beginning. The last decade has seen Plovdiv change in many ways. And I trace it, I trace it back, if I am to be sincere, trace it back to the first nights of museums and galleries. It's very interesting that you're here during that, during that weekend. We decided to visit Plovdiv during the 13th edition of the night of museums and galleries. I started 2004 with a gallery, but 2005 with a uh, with a night of museums and galleries, which was a cultural project, but it was also a project that was orientated into development of the city and identifying uh, new artistic spots. Because we had uh, museums and galleries, but uh, also added some public spaces that were not known and culture, club, artist studios, you know, some hidden spots. So like seeing the map from above, it was one of the most important things because I am Plovdivian, I knew the city and I, I had my personal attachment to, to this city. So I was looking and said, okay, this is interesting spot and that and that and that. Out of my curiosity and understanding of the culture and art as something which is horizontal. So, what was Veselina's approach? Actually, the way you see, the way you look things was the most important thing. The innovation was, was that, how I was looking uh, on, on, the, on the culture and art. My production of uh, cultural uh, facts started with, uh, with my poetry. And 2007 I published a book. Um, so the poetry is quite conceptual, it's already, it was dealing with the city, with the museum culture, musification of the culture, so it were kind of a concepts how I see things. It was kind of a look from above, you know, when you see the map, how you see the map, how you see the city. It was very important way I was implementing the processes and maybe because I also have dyslexia, I needed to organize worlds, I needed to organize spaces. I know it's quite conceptual, but in urbanism you understand that. The Night of Museums and Galleries was the first event that was gathering people from different ages. Before having Facebook, following your interest, uh, you can reach places that are not usually visible for you. This was 12 years, 13 years ago. And when Vesi came to me and said, I want to do something like that, I saw it in Dusseldorf. I said, great idea, but will somebody follow in your footsteps? She said, I don't care, I'll try it. She collected 5,000 levels from friends and she did something extraordinary. 
I remember this Filipopolis in particular entering it and I said how many people passed today and there were more than 2,000 <laughs> Are you serious? I went to the historical museum. There was nothing special there. It was just the old guns from millennia ago and the old uniforms from the uh, um, liberation from the Ottoman era. And there was a small black TV and they were showing some film. And there were people sitting with small kids and watching. And I talked to the lady who was in charge and her eyes were like that and she said, it's amazing, in one day we've had twice as many people as in the last year. In the whole year. She said we have to reconceptualize, to change our whole approach to, to people, to the way we do things. She couldn't believe it. The strange thing is that when Vesi pushed the museums and the galleries, everybody was... They didn't believe her. They, they were reluctant. They said, one o'clock in the morning, three o'clock, you're crazy. I mean, we'll close at 10, okay, 7 to 10, but if somebody comes after 8, we will be surprised. Nothing like that. I, I could see young people flocking the streets. I was at the Ethnographic Museum at 1.30 at night, and they had just closed, and people were banging on the door, and they said, you promised until 3 in the morning. You promised you won't enter.